Based off of a lot of the requirements back in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, I don't even think I would have qualified to be a flight attendant. Welcome to my channel. I'm Julia, a Dallas-based flight attendant. I've actually had a few different requests for this video about flight attendant requirements. So I thought it would actually be kind of fun to take a spin on this video and to go all the way back until the 1930s, 40s, and 50s when the flight attendant job first became a thing and what those requirements were and compare it all the way until now. So I did a quick Google search and found some information on the very first female flight attendant. Her name was Ellen Church, she was a 25 year old registered nurse. She was hired by United Airlines in 1930. She envisioned nurses on the aircraft and other airlines followed suit, hiring nurses to serve as flight attendants, then called stewardesses or air hostesses on most flights. So I have heard from multiple people that way back in the day when the job flight attendant first became an actual job, you were required to be a nurse or have some sort of nursing background. So I did do just a little bit of online research and found some really interesting requirements of what it took to be a flight attendant back in the 1950s. So one of the requirements was a soft and feminine hairstyle. So obviously that can be interpreted in so many different ways. Ways. In today's world, your hair can be curly, it can be straight, it can be braided, it can be basically whatever you want it to be as long as it is neat and it is not an abnormal color. So it has to be a natural color, so blonde, brown, black, red. You can't have pink, purple, blue, all of these crazy colored hairs that unfortunately is not allowed in the airline industry quite yet. Requirement number two back in the 1950s is to have delicate and flattering makeup. This is a little interesting interesting because depending on the airline you work for now, some do require you to wear makeup and others don't. Most airlines just suggest a little bit of blush, mascara, and maybe a little bit of lipstick, but I do know there are some other airlines that are much more strict about it. It is not a requirement for my airline and many airlines to wear makeup. It is just a suggestion. Requirement number three is hands soft and manicured. This is still a requirement, at least for most airlines. They like your hands to look pretty because we are serving passengers and it is a customer service job so you want to present yourself well in terms of nails the cleaner the better like right now my nails are not up to par and I need to go get them done but basically like a French manicure with a French tip it looks really classy and really nice for the flight attendant job okay this is a requirement back in the day that thank goodness is not a requirement today it says here a maximum weight and this is a maximum weight of 135 pounds and a pleasing appearance. I can tell you that would not fly in today's world. There are so many flight attendants who are so many heights, shapes, sizes, body types, and that is normal. That is we are human. That is how we are supposed to be. Way back in the day, I know that they had weight checks and flight attendants would have to get weighed once a week. And if they didn't meet the weight requirement based off of their height, then they'd have to basically take the week off until they would lose the weight and then they could come back to work. In today's world, we do not have weight checks as flight attendants. Our weight check is being able to sit in the jump seat and wrap the straps around us and pull tight without needing a seatbelt extender. Okay, requirement number six for back in the day was a well-fitted girdle. I don't even know what a girdle is. Is that like a corset? Requirement today is that you just have to be able to wear your uniform and the uniform comes obviously in many different sizes. All right, requirement number seven back in the day was a height ranging from five foot two to five foot six with a neatly proportioned figure. The only height requirement that we have is I know at my interview, I had to take my heels off, um, stand barefoot, and I had to reach into an overhead bin and make sure that I could touch the emergency equipment. And this is just to make sure that if someone is sick on the plane, if there's some sort of emergency where we need the equipment, we are tall enough and able to reach it quickly. And for that, I would say you usually have to be like four foot nine to five feet tall. This one is really funny. So requirement number eight back in the day is legs smooth and free of hair. Female flight attendants are required to wear tights with our skirt or dress uniform and if we are wearing pants then we are required to wear high socks and same with the males they are required to wear pants with socks so honestly you will never see any hair on a flight attendant's legs because we are wearing tights and our legs are fully covered so the world may never know if we actually shave or not. 
All right, requirement number nine back in the day is your marital status has to be single and you have to have no children. That is not a rule. You can have kids, you can be married, you do not have to be single. There are so many flight attendants I know who are married and have children and make this job work and it is not a big deal. I think back in the day why they wanted flight attendants who did not have children and did not have a spouse was because the job is all over the place and it is really difficult to schedule sometimes so it's really difficult when you have outside obligations as well but also we are able to drop our trips now trade them with other flight attendants and manipulate our schedules more so than at least from what I've heard back in the day what flight attendants could do requirement number 10 back in the day was you could only join for a maximum of 10 years this is obviously not a rule anymore there are so many flight attendants who fly for 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 years. They make a lifelong career out of this. The reason why that rule was in place was because after 10 years, a lot of women did want to get married. They wanted to have children and also they aged and the airline industry is still very much an appearance-based industry but it was so much more so appearance-based way back in the day and they did not want flight attendants who looked old to work on their flights. So now I want to talk to you guys about requirements now, especially if you are considering applying for the job, this video can be very useful for you. In terms of education, you are required to have a high school diploma or a GED equivalent. You are not required to have a college education, although it does really help. I received my undergraduate degree in journalism and then I had double minors in communication studies and psychology. Not only do I feel like my degree helped me get my job and be a better flight attendant. I think that even if I don't fly forever, it's something that I can always fall back on. For this job, it is not required to have a college degree. Requirement number two here says college education or two years of customer service experience preferred. So for me, I had the college education and I was a bit of an oddball and I got really lucky and I'm so blessed. I was actually hired to be a flight attendant with barely any customer service experience. When I graduated from college, I worked as a copywriter intern at an office, so I did have some customer service experience doing that, but honestly, I had very little. And then I was hired on with a regional airline where I was based in Seattle, and from there, I applied for my mainline position, and I was offered that job. But if you are a person who has a lot of customer service experience and you are considering applying to be a flight attendant, I highly, highly, highly suggest that you highlight all of your awesome customer service experience. Make yourself stand out against your competitors. What is it about you that makes you special and that you can bring to the airline, whether that's your college education, your travel experiences, your customer service experience, your volunteer experiences, like what is it that would make you a good flight attendant and make sure that you highlight those in your resume and throughout the interview process. All right, another requirement has to do with age and it is a minimum of 20 years old. There are some regional airlines that will hire you at the age of 18 or 19 but most mainline carriers, so think of like the really big airlines, will only hire you when you are a minimum of 20 years old. And that has to do with the fact that we do serve alcohol on our planes. Another requirement is you have to have the right to work in the US and travel unrestricted from the countries served by that airline. So a lot of this will be handled during the background check of your interview, but basically you just have to be able to one, work in the United States and be able to travel unrestricted to all of the destinations that that airline specifically serves. Obviously another requirement with being a flight attendant is your willingness to work nights, weekends, and holidays. The schedule can be really, really, really hard sometimes. I am not gonna lie to you guys about that. It is a lot of time away from home. It is a lot of time away from family and friends. It's a lot of missed dinners, missed birthdays, missed parties, and especially when you're new like me, it can be really hard to get holidays off because that's when everyone is traveling to see their families but it is a pretty cool experience knowing that I am helping other people get to go see their families for the holidays. And you know, with this job, you make the most of it. You can celebrate the holiday on a different day that you have off. Also, another requirement with your willingness to basically make sacrifices for the job is you also have to be willing to relocate to any of the bases offered by that airline. And by relocate, you can either commute, so you live at home and then you fly to your base the night before, you work your trips and then you fly home or completely relocating to that base. 
For me, I highly suggest that you relocate completely to your base because let me tell you, commuting is so stressful. Flights are so full. You don't always know if you'll get on. There's always storms and blizzards and mechanicals and different things that can happen that can really make your commute very stressful, but it is so much easier to be able to get in your car and drive to work instead of having to take an airplane to work. All right, another requirement today is no facial piercings or visible tattoos. Now, most US airlines are very, very, very strict about this rule. Although some airlines are becoming a little more relaxed with the tattoo policy, most are not. So what does a visible tattoo mean? It means that when you are in your uniform, can you see your tattoo? If you have a tattoo on your wrist, can you cover it with a watch, with makeup, with the long sleeve shirt? I, for example, have a tattoo on my back, but it is 100% completely covered by the uniform, so no one will ever see it, so it's okay. As you can see, the requirements to become a flight attendant have changed a lot over the past 60 and 70 years. It's actually pretty incredible. I really enjoyed filming this video for you guys. I really want to film more videos about becoming a flight attendant and the interview process. So if you guys would like to see that, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. Thank you everyone so, so, so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel so you never miss any travel tips and adventures. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.